Hello, everybody. This is uh, Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, tonight, I'm continuing in the study of the book of Proverbs. Uh, we're going to begin with chapter 29, verse 1. Let's see how far I can get tonight. Uh, now, I am a KJV firstist, so I will read it first in the KJV, and then I'm, I'll probably look at it in the Amplified Translation. Sometimes I find the Amplified Translation to be helpful. Now, if you did not see the previous studies on Proverbs, all the other 28 chapters are already uploaded and available on my uh, YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher. So I hope you will go back and watch this from the very beginning. So chapter 29, verse 1 says, He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. So if you're reproved over and over again and you just are stubborn, uh, you'll probably end up just having finally the consequence of, of uh, destruction. It reads in uh, the Amplified, he who hardens his neck and refuses instruction after being often reproved, that's corrected and criticized, will suddenly be broken beyond repair. So let this be a warning to all of us. Let's listen. Let's be instructable. Uh, otherwise, we will be, we are destructible. We will be destroyed because of stubbornness and unwillingness to listen. Uh, verse 2 says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Uh, yeah, we were very blessed if we have good rulers. Uh, I wonder what percentage of rulers throughout history, throughout all the countries of the world, how often have we been blessed with the good rulers? I, I'm not sure how, that's a very high percentage. Verse three says, whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father, but he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. So of course, King Solomon wrote Proverbs. He, he wrote it to instruct his son in wisdom. And so he's speaking as a father and, and he's saying that uh, if, if you, my son, love wisdom, if you love listening to this these Proverbs and learning and applying it to your life, that's wisdom. Well, you'll, you'll make your father happy. But he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. Well, it, it seems on the surface that perhaps these two uh, uh, points do not really fit together. It seems like two different thoughts. But actually, uh, Proverbs is, it's very common for there to be a contrast. Uh, if you seek wisdom, you'll, your father will be happy. If you, but if you're running around with harlots and spending all your money, uh, uh, you're, you're going to you're going to end up you know suffering the consequences. Verse three in the Amplified says, "A man who loves skillful and godly wisdom makes his father joyful, but he who associates with prostitutes wastes his wealth." There's all kinds of bad consequences come from uh, you know pursuing and entertaining harlots. Uh, verse 4 says, in the KJV, the king by judgment establisheth the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. Uh, I think the gifts in this case is talking about bribes. Uh, we've, we discussed this in previous chapters. Let me see how it states it in the Amplified. The king establishes and stabilizes the land by justice, but a man who takes bribes overthrows it. Yeah. So we don't want to take bribes. We don't want to offer bribes. Uh, you know, it, 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 this, unfortunately, I live, I shouldn't say unfortunately, I, but I, I live in the United States of America. And here, even after over 200 years of history, uh, you know, we, I, I feel that our government is, is corrupt. Uh, it, it uh, you know, bribery is just one small example of corruption. People that take bribes 
and people that offer bribes. This is not how you get justice and fairness in society. Uh, verse 5 says, a, a man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. Well, we know that flattery is not good. Unless you're giving someone a sincere compliment with no ulterior motives, uh, in that case, it would be good. We should always try to find um, uh, uh, occasions to compliment and encourage and uplift each other. But flattery is where you're making an insincere compliment in, in, in hopes of gaining something. So verse 5 in the Amplified says, A man who flatters his neighbor with smooth words intending to do harm is spreading a net for his own feet. So in other words, it'll, it'll probably just backfire on you. Verse 6 in the KJV says, In the transgression of an evil man there is a snare, but the righteous doth sing and rejoice. So when you're doing evil things, you're going to get caught in all your evil plans and deeds. You'll get caught, you'll suffer consequences, but the righteous, we can sing and rejoice. We don't have to worry about being caught. Uh, verse seven in the, in the KJ, in the Amplified says, uh, was that verse seven? No, verse six. By his wicked plan, an evil man is trapped, but the righteous man sings and rejoices, for his plan brings good things to him. So why don't we just spend our time doing good things that we don't have to worry about getting caught and suffering the consequences. Uh, now verse 7 in the KJV says, The righteous considereth the cause of the poor, but the wicked regardeth not to know it. Uh, there was a verse earlier that talked about how we turn away and we don't look at the poor. You know, if someone comes up as and uh, you know, is asking for your help, and you, and you turn away. You don't don't even make eye contact with them. That's a shameful thing. And uh, we 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 should care about the poor. We should help the poor. And a lot of people think that sin is simply committing a bad act. But Jesus said that sin is not only a bad act, but a bad thought. Uh, and it also says that neglect is sinful if you fail to do something good when you have the opportunity if, if if the poor need your help and you're able to help them and you turn your back on them that's sinful too because you have neglected that's the sin of omission you've neglected to do something good uh, verse 7 in the uh, amplified says the righteous man cares for the rights of the poor but the wicked man has no interest in such knowledge Okay, verse 8 in the KJV says, Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. Scornful men bring a city into a snare. What is scornful? Let me look at that and amplify it. It says scoffers. Scoffers set a city afire by stirring up trouble. A scoffer or a scornful person. What is it to scoff? It's to like dismiss something and say oh that's you just ignore something you're scoffing at it make like and, and diminishing it like it's not important a scoffer set a city afire by stirring up trouble but wise men turn away anger and restore order with their good judgment now back to the kjv it says in verse 10 no verse 9 a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. No, it says, if a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. I don't know if it's referring to the wise man raging or laughing, or let's see how it says in the Amplified. If a wise man has a controversy, with a foolish and arrogant man. The foolish man ignores logic and fairness and only rages or laughs, and there's no peace, rest, or agreement. Well, we, we deal with that all the time here on, on uh, YouTube when we are trying to reason with people 
over the gospel. We've, uh, myself and my friends here on YouTube, we've spent a lot of time recently trying to reason with the people who are perverting the gospel, the people who say, Faith in Jesus for salvation is insufficient. More is required than simply simple faith. And um, what, what more is required? It depends on who you talk to. Water baptism, repenting of your sins, uh, you know, changing your life, uh, you know, following commandments. You know, the, the the list varies, but they they all say just easy believism. Just simply believing on Jesus and trusting Jesus, you think that's enough? They say that's, no, you can't get saved by simply trusting Jesus. So we we spend a lot of time here on YouTube uh, arguing against that heresy. That uh, So, but reasoning with these people, since they're foolish and they will not believe the scriptures, uh, it's it's like this, verse here that says if a wise man a wise man who is, re is a man who reads the scriptures and believes it and it says if a wise man has a controversy with a foolish and arrogant man so these lordship work salvationists are they're foolish and arrogant they don't want to listen they're foolish because they're they want to trust in their own righteousness rather than the the uh, the, the free gift Jesus offers us uh, it says the foolish man ignores logic and fairness. Yeah, we deal with it all the time. The Lordship salvation is they're ignoring logic and fairness in the scriptures. And they just rage and laugh. Yeah, someone we talked to the other day, they're ranting and raving as we're trying to reason with them. There's no peace or, or, or agreement. Now, verse 10 in the KJV says, the bloodthirsty hate the upright but the just seek his soul. Okay, so the bloodthirsty hate the upright. The, the evil people that were bloodthirsty and they're violent, they hate the upright, the, the just people who, who are trying to do the right things, uh, but the just or the righteous people, uh, they seek his soul. They seek his soul. In other words, I guess it's we're, we're uh, soul winners. Verse 10 in the Amplified says, The bloodthirsty hate the blameless because of his integrity, but the upright are concerned for his life. Yeah. Verse 11 in the KJV says, uh, A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in, t in till afterwards. Uh, many times in the book of Proverbs, we're instructed to be... Uh, 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 quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Um, that's from that's from James, but in Proverbs it says the same thing. Over and over, over again, we're taught: be a good listener. Don't be so anxious to talk. You learn more by listening. And in this verse here, it's reminding us that uh, a fool uttereth all his mind. If, if, if you just speak everything that's on your mind without having a filter, without slowing down time and taking a little time to think before you speak, it says, uh, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. So you know, just hold your thoughts back. Get, hear people out completely before you start arguing back. And in the Amplified, it phrases it this way, a, a short-sighted fool always loses his temper and displays his anger, but a wise man uses self-control and holds it back. Now, verse 12 in the KJV says, um, If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. Hmm. Let's read that in the Amplified. It says, if a ruler pays attention to lies and encourages corruption, all his officials will become wicked. Verse 13 says, in the KJV, the poor and the deceitful man meet together. 
the Lord enlighteneth both their eyes. Let's read that in the Amplified. The poor man and the oppressor have this in common. Okay. The Lord giveth light to the eyes of both. Yeah. The, the, the Lord is calling on all of us. The poor, the humble, the proud, the oppressors. The Lord still, the Bible says, God does not desire that any of us should perish. That we should all come to repentance. Repentance means we change our mind. So God desires that all of us, he's drawing all of us. The Bible says we can't, we cannot come to Jesus unless we're drawn. But then Jesus says uh, that just as Moses uh, lifted up the serpent in the desert, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. Um, and, and in that manner, he will draw all men to himself. So Jesus said when he's lifted on that cross, and that way he wants to draw all men to himself. So really the the Bible does tell us that God desires all of us to come to Jesus. But uh, it says the poor man and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gives light to the, the eyes of both. So everyone, without exception, whosoever, the word whosoever, we find throughout the scriptures. And uh, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The, the Lord desires all of us to come to Jesus. And he certainly wants to, but he's not going to force any of us to come to Jesus. Now, verse 15 in the KJV says, the rod and reproof give wisdom. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. The rod and reproof give wisdom. So this is corporal punishment. This is spanking your children, giving some kind of dis disciplining them. So it gives wisdom. Children will get wisdom. They'll learn their lessons if you discipline them. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Sometimes parents, they love their children so much they, they can't bring themselves to spank them or to discipline them. But they don't realize that they're really harming their children by letting them run wild and not, not uh, teaching them discipline. In verse uh, 16, the KJV says, When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. Yeah. The wicked do wicked things. They transgress. If there's more wicked people, there's more transgressions, there's more evil, but the righteous shall see their fall eventually. Verse 17 says, Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. So another verse telling us, don't ignore your, your, your children's um, bad behaviors. You need to correct them. You need to discipline them. And it says, he shall give thee rest. If you discipline them, they'll learn their lesson, and then you can rest assured that uh, they will grow up wise and, and that their lives will be uh, prosperous and happy. He shall give delight unto thy soul. Verse 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Well, you have the law of God and you have the laws of, of nations, the law of society, but you, if you keep these laws, your life is going to be better than if you're a lawbreaker. Because when you break the law, there's consequences. Verse 19, a servant will not be corrected by words, for though he understand, he will not answer. Let me see that in verse 19, in Amplify, verse 19. A servant will not be corrected by words alone, for though he understands, he will not respond nor pay attention. So there's got to be consequences. Instead of just talking nice and, and uh, you know, you know they, some, everybody must know that when you behave badly, there's a consequence.
Verse 20 says, Seeth thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. Don't be hasty to speak. Slow down. Listen to people. Be a little bit more pensive and contemplative before everything comes out of your mouth. Seeth thou a man, this is verse, uh, the verse 21 says, He that delicately bringeth up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at the length. It's kind of like adopting, adopting a child or, or mentoring. Verse 22 says, An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. Verse 25, A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Pride cometh before the fall. Pride is the origin of all man's problems. Uh, if you humble yourself before men and before God, uh, you will, well, you can only be saved if by humbling yourself and recognizing, I need a savior. It's, it's, a, it's a, uh, a humble state of mind that says, I'm not capable I need help, and that's what we need to do in order to get saved. We need to uh, admit to God and ourselves that, wait, um, I'm not perfect. I could never go before God at the judgment and say, I've been perfect, so I deserve heaven. And once we understand that and we're humbled, we can say, I need Jesus. I need to trust Jesus instead of relying on my own self-righteousness. Verse 24 says, Whoso is partner with a thief hateth his own soul. He heareth cursing and betrayeth it not and be, be, bewrayeth it not. I don't know what that word is. Let me see. 24 in the Amplified says, uh, Whoever is partner with a thief hates his own life. He hears the curse when swearing an oath to testify, but discloses nothing and commits perjury by omission. So don't be partnered with a thief. And the law says that if you're partners with a thief, then you're guilty too. Uh, verse 25, the KJV says, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Uh, let me look at that in the Amplified. The fear of man brings a snare. But whoever trusts in and puts his confidence in the Lord will be exalted and saved. I will apply this to salvation. Whoever trusts in and puts his confidence in Jesus for their salvation will be saved. Verse 26 in the KJV says, Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. Yeah, well... You could try to gain favor from, uh, you know, uh, the government, the ruling officials from kings and stuff. But, but really, what's really important is uh, the judgment of God. And judge, God says, all of man is condemned. And scripture says, whosoever believeth in the Son, that's Jesus Christ, uh, is not condemned. But whosoever believeth not in the Son... He, he is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So our, our starting position is condemned. We're all condemned because we're, we're born as sinners. We, uh, we, we sin naturally. From the time we're a little small child, no one has to teach us how to sin. So uh, we're all guilty and therefore we're all condemned. And the only way we get this cond condemnation off of us is by the mercy and grace of God. Uh, God doesn't desire that any of us should be per perish because of this condemnation. So God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. Jesus died for our sins, paid for our sins. And because of that, uh, we, we are not condemned. 
we can have life everlasting if we trust the Savior Jesus. Uh, verse 27 says, An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. Yeah, the wicked people hate the just, the, 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 the righteous, the, the, uh, the upright man. The wicked don't like him. Uh, all right, well, that's the end of this chapter. I'm going to uh, stop there, but let me elaborate a little bit further about this question of salvation that I've alluded to throughout this study, and that is, what is salvation? Uh, the root word is comes from save or saved, and what are you saved from? Um, man, can't, man is condemned. Uh, we are in condemnation uh, because of who we are and what we d we've done. Uh, and, and that's why we need to be saved. Uh, the condemnation results in uh, uh, the second death in the lake of fire. So do you want to be spared that? Do you want to be saved from that? Well, to be saved, the Bible says, um, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. So if you want to be saved, if you no longer want to remain condemned, then you need to believe on Jesus. Put your faith in him. Now, you can try to get to heaven some other way if you like. The Bible says it's impossible. Jesus said there's no other way but by him. So if you want to try to get there some other way, go ahead and try. You can join their, all the religions of the world. You can do all the religious rites and ceremonies and you can confess your sins and repent and give to charity and all these things. But the Bible says we all fall short of the glory of God. Uh, no matter what we do, when we appear before God, we have to admit that we've never been perfect. And because of that, uh, we're condemned. But thank you, Jesus. He loves us so much, he became a man named Jesus, the Son of God, and he died for our sins. So if you believe that Jesus is your Savior, God, who died for your sins, and you trust him to give you life everlasting in heaven as a gift, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. So that's why you need to, to suffer the second death in the lake of fire. But instead, Jesus Christ suffered the death instead in your place. So if you will put your faith in him, the Bible says, even though the wages of sin is death, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Do you want to receive the gift of eternal life? It's free. That's what a gift is. Um, if, if, if I offered you a gift, uh, it means that you didn't work for it. You didn't pay for it. I worked and earned it and paid for it, and then I'm offering it to you freely. That's what Jesus has done for all of us. He, uh, he lived a perfect, sinless life. His work is perfect. And he paid the price for our sins with his suffering and death and blood, shed blood on that cross. And so he paid for it, the gift, and he offers it to you freely now. You can receive it if you want it. In humility, just admit that you need Jesus as your Savior and trust him. Now, the reason I am so confident is because of the resurrection. Uh, Jesus promised to give us a sign to prove that his claims were true, that he is God, that he is the Savior. He is the only way to get to heaven. He does have the power over life and death. And how did he prove it? He said, uh, when they kill me and bury me, I'll raise myself back to life on the third day. And he did. He was bodily raised back to life, and he walked among 500 witnesses for 40 days. And they saw him. They talked to him, they touched him, they ate with him. And it's the resurrection that gives us confidence that our faith in Jesus is justified. And Jesus promises, he guarantees that you will go to heaven if you trust him. And the Bible says God cannot lie. God cannot break a promise. So you're certain you're going to go to heaven if you'll just simply put your faith in Jesus. Do it now. And then you can be confident the rest of your life that if someone says, do you think you're going to go to heaven when you die? You can confidently say yes, because Jesus is my Savior. Thank you for watching. 
I hope you will join me nightly, 7 p.m. Pacific time, for more episodes of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Bless you, in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.